Have you ever wanted to invest in value stocks just like Warren Buffett? Since the 1960s, Buffett has been investing into value stocks through his holding company Berkshire Hathaway. And at that time, the performance of Berkshire was more than twice as high as the S&P 500 per year. But finding good value stocks is difficult. If you don't want to do the work of finding, researching and buying value stocks yourself, then one easy way to tap into value is by investing in value ETFs. Today, there are 82 value ETFs out there, which makes picking the right one difficult. That's why in this video, we will look at three of the best and most interesting ETF options out there. Let's go. What's up everyone, this is FU Academy, your channel for financial education and on this channel I share lifestyle, investing style and educational videos just like this one. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. Just very quickly, if you aren't sure what value investing is, it's an investment strategy that involves buying stocks that are undervalued compared to the average market. So instead of buying the most hyped stocks, value investing looks for hidden values. There are a few metrics to see if a stock is undervalued. There is the PE ratio, so the ratio of a company's share price relative to its earnings per share. And the price to book ratio, so the ratio of a company's share price relative to its book value, so its total assets minus intangible assets and liabilities. Let's start by looking at the largest and cheapest value ETF, which typically means that you are looking at Vanguard ETFs. And that brings us to value ETF number one, the Vanguard Value ETF, ticker symbol VTV. This ETF tracks the crisp US large cap value index, which selects companies based on value metrics like the price to book, forward PE, historic PE, price to dividend, and price to sales ratio. The VTV has a total expense ratio of 0.04%, and that's one of the cheapest ETFs out there. Its performance over the last 10 years was solid with an annual return rate of 13.5%, which was 3% lower than the S&P 500 return over the the same time frame per year. And if you look at the performance chart, you also see where that gap comes from. Until the 2020 crash, the VTV and the S&P 500 had an almost identical performance. But since the 2020 crash, the VTV recovered slower. And that's because the S&P 500 index is dominated by big tech. And it's tech companies that benefited the most from a shift towards e-commerce and cloud technology. And that's a common theme that you will see with almost all value ETFs. This ETF has a fund size of $88 billion, which makes it not just the largest value ETF out there, but also puts it in the top 10 of the largest ETFs globally. And a large fund size is important because it indicates how liquid a fund is. The VTV invests in 347 companies, which gives you nice diversification. In the top 10 holdings, you will find well-known companies like Berkshire, of course, and banks like JP Morgan and Bank of America. The top 10 holdings make up 20% of the fund, which is quite top heavy. Important to note, the the VTV only invests in US companies. If we have a look at the industry breakdown of this ETF, we can see that the industries with the highest exposure are financials, healthcare, and industrials. These three industries alone make up 55%, whilst the exposure to tech companies is only 6%. And that's the opposite of the S&P 500 industry breakdown, but quite common for value ETFs. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. Tech companies are usually high growth companies with a lot of future potential. And for all that, investors are willing to pay a higher price today, which pushes up their valuations. Banks on the other side don't grow massively anymore. There are more stable and established companies that meet a lot of the criteria of value investing. And they tend to be cheaper because they don't create as much excitement amongst investors anymore. And lastly, the VTV pays out dividends every quarter with a dividend yield of 2.1%. This ETF is a great starting point if you look at value ETFs. The VTV gives you easy and diversified exposure to value stocks at a very fair price. The VTV only invests in US companies and investing in one country only can be risky. In the last 30 years, there were many cases where investors that were only invested in one country saw huge drawdowns because of local stock market crash, economic collapses, or various other reasons, whilst the global stock market remained stable. Examples are the Japanese stock market crash in 1990, the 1997 Asian financial crisis, the European debt crisis in 2010, and the Chinese stock market crash in 2015. Bad things can happen in one country, and one country only can't consistently outperform all the others. That's why it makes sense to invest globally. And that brings us to value ETF number two, 
the ICS MSCI International Value Factor ETF, ticker symbol IVLU. This ETF tracks the MSCI world, excluding USA Enhanced Value Index, which picks companies based on their price to book value, forward PE ratio, and the enterprise value to cash flow from operations. The IVLU has an expense ratio of 0.3%, which is fairly low for an international value ETF. This ETF was only set up in 2015, so we don't have a super long track record. But its performance over the last five years was okay, with an annual return rate of 6.48%. One thing to mention though, the S&P 500 return over the same time frame was 10% higher per year. But in the last year alone, this ETF could generate a return of 34%, outperforming the S&P 500 by over 4%. This ETF has a fund size of $1 billion, which isn't huge, but still liquid enough. The IVLU invests in 347 companies, which gives you a nice diversification. In the top 10 holdings, you will find companies like Toyota, British American Tobacco, and Novartis. The top 10 holdings make up 17% of the fund, which is a good balance. The IVLU invests in a total of 19 developed countries, but the two countries with the highest exposure, Japan and the UK, make up more than half of the fund. If we have a look at the industry breakdown of this ETF, we can see that the industries with the highest exposure are financials, industrials, and consumers. These three industries alone make up over 47%. And lastly, the IVLU pays out dividends semi-annually with a dividend yield of 2.17%, the highest one of all the ETFs in this video. And that's because in a global comparison, the US isn't really the country with the highest dividend yield. This chart shows dividend yields of 2019 in a global comparison, and you can see that countries like Australia or the UK usually pay out higher dividends than the US. That's what the IVLU with its global focus can capture for ETF holders. Something I also really like about this ETF is its super low PE ratio of 13.7, which is more than twice as cheap as the S&P 500 average PE ratio of 28.9. Overall, the IVLU is a great addition to any US-focused ETF that you already have. Another investment type that is booming at the moment is ESG investing. It's a type of sustainable investing that focuses on two things, financial returns of investments and its positive impact on the environment and society. In the last few years, a lot of capital has been flowing into ESG. In the last five years alone, the money invested in ESG ETFs has gone up by 16x. And capital flow in investing is key because it determines the share price of companies. If you want to know more about ESG investing, its benefits and performance, then check out my dedicated ESG video in the link. And that brings us to value ETF number three, the Nuveen ESG large cap value ETF, ticker symbol NULV. This ETF combines two factors, value and ESG. The NULV starts by looking at the MSCI USA value index, which selects value stocks based on price to book, forward PE ratio, and dividend yield. It then screens out companies involved in controversial activities like alcohol, weapons, nuclear power, or gambling. The NULV has an expense ratio of 0.25%, which is fair for an ETF with two factors, value and ESG. This ETF was set up in 2016, so we don't have a super long track record, but its performance over the last Last three years was good with an annual return rate of 13.5%, which was only 2% lower than the S&P 500 return over the same time frame. This ETF has a fund size of $1.2 billion, which is still liquid enough. The NULV invests in 119 companies, which isn't a lot, but which also makes sense considering that you have a value and an ESG filter here. In the top 10 holdings, you will find well-known companies like Procter & Gamble, Home Depot, and Pepsi. The top 10 holdings make up 23% of the fund, which is high. The NULV only invests in US companies. If we have a look at the industry breakdown, we can see that the industries with the highest exposure are financials, healthcare, and industrials. These three industries alone make up over 51%. And lastly, the NULV pays out dividends only once a year, and the dividend yield is 1.9%, which is the lowest one of this video. Something that I really like about this ETF is that it still has a relatively high tech exposure with 11%. Overall, the NULV is a great way to combine two things, value and ESG investing. But hey, question to you, how important is ESG in your investment strategy? As always, let me know in the comment section below. There you have it, a review of the best value ETFs. The ETFs that we looked at in this video were very different. We looked at the largest one, the one that invests globally, and one that combines value and ESG. 
value ETFs can be a smart addition to your core portfolio. And all three ETFs that we looked at in this video are very interesting options. But what do you actually think? Are you already invested in one of the ETFs of this video? Which one is your favorite? As always, let me know in the comment section below. I hope that this video could bring some value to you. If you like what you saw and you want to support this channel, then please make sure you subscribe. Thank you very much for doing that and peace.